I'm reading from 2 Kings chapter 2. And it came about when the Lord was about to take Elijah by a whirlwind to heaven, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Then the sons of the prophets who were at Bethel came up to Elisha and said to him, do you know that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? And he said, yes, I know. Be still. Elijah said to him, Elisha, please stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The sons of the prophets who were at Jericho approached Elisha and said to him, do you know that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? And he answered, yes, I know. Be still. Then Elijah said to him, please stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. And he said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Now, 50 men of the sons of prophets went and stood opposite them at a distance, while the two of them stood by the Jordan. Elijah took his mantle and folded it together and struck the waters, and they were divided here and there, so that the two of them crossed over on dry ground. When they had crossed over, Elijah said to Elisha, ask what I shall do for you before I am taken from you. And Elisha said, please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. He said, you have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I am taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. As they were going along and talking, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, which separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind in heaven, to heaven. Elisha saw it and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. And he saw Elijah no more. Then he, Elisha, took hold of his own clothes and tore them into pieces. Sunday, that is the sermon text as we will come together for worship from, first, from 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. And that will give us an opportunity to look into the life of Elijah and his last uh, day on this earth and find some lessons from the prophet for how we can live productive lives in the service of God. And a key that we will learn from Elijah uh, is that living a life of service to God is, is very much... Uh, a matter of living until we die, to not stop living uh, before we die. And hopefully that will spark your curiosity a bit as you prayerfully anticipate us sharing that text together. Uh, not so specifically to get into the text from Second Kings, but our time together today, I would like to familiarize us or to re-familiarize, depending on where you are, uh, with uh, the life of Elijah. Uh, I'm grateful to the writing of a Bible teacher, Leslie White, for helping me give some structure to our review of his life. But before we review his life, let's think about um, what Elijah was. Elijah was a prophet, a biblical prophet. Uh, and, and in the Old Testament, a uh, prophet or prophets were uh, people who were used by God to communicate God's message uh, to the world. Uh, sometimes prophets were called seers uh, because uh, they could see, that is, spiritually speaking, as God gave them insight. And uh, the prophets, according to biblical scholars, uh, they are divided into uh, writing prophets and non-writing prophets. We know the writing prophets were like Isaiah and Daniel and Amos and Malachi. And then there are other prophets who did not leave behind written records of their ministries, but are mentioned at various places uh, in the uh, Old Testament. Uh, Ahijah, Micaiah, and Elisha, another Elisha, uh, are those, or, or Elisha that followed Elijah, uh, don't leave behind written records, though we do have uh, in the written text of the Old Testament, some of their messages. And then there's uh, at least one anonymous prophet mentioned in the Old Testament, uh, an unnamed prophet in 
uh, listed in Judges uh, chapter 6. Uh, now, the prophets come from a variety of backgrounds. They spoke to different audiences. Uh, they had uh, unique styles among them, and they used assorted methods for communicating their messages. Most of the uh, Old Testament prophets' messages uh, were directed toward and concerned the people of Israel. Uh, if other nations were mentioned in their uh, messages or their writings, it, 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 that mention was usually in connection to those nations' dealings with Israel. Uh, most of the prophets of God in the Old Testament that we read about were men, but the Old Testament does mention uh, female prophets, uh, Miriam, as mentioned in Exodus, Deborah in Judges, and Huldah is mentioned in 2 Kings 22. Men or women, all the prophets shared some characteristics uh, that made their ministries uh, prophetic. Uh, prophets were called by God to be prophets. We don't have any record of a prophet or a person taking a, uh, an assessment uh, that uh, revealed that he or she was had the uh, temperament uh, to be a prophet. Uh, prophets did not seek out uh, their task, but were rather uh, were called uh, by God to this task, uh, much as we hope uh, valid uh, uh, preachers and teachers uh, for God in this uh, time uh, have not sought out that as a career so much as understand the call of God on their lives. Prophets were called by God. Prophets were required to deliver God's message accurately. Uh, the prophet Micaiah, uh, one of the non-writing prophets whose message is recorded in 1 Kings 22, uh, put it like this, as surely as the Lord lives, I can tell the king only what the Lord tells me. Communicate, deliver God's message accurately. Uh, some of the prophets uh, had uh, somewhat a unique appearance. Elijah uh, was known for wearing a garment of hair and had a leather belt around his waist, 2 Kings chapter 1. Uh, God told Ezekiel to shave his head and shave his beard, which would have given him a, a somewhat unique appearance in his day. Uh, many of the prophets led hard lives. Uh, Isaiah uh, was sent to a people uh, who were ever hearing but never understanding. And according at least to tradition, he was eventually murdered for his efforts. Uh, many times the prophets in the Old Testament predicted the future. Sometimes it was the immediate future, and other times it was uh, many uh, years or even uh, centuries into the future. There were Old Testament prophecies that were given that were not fulfilled until uh, New Testament times. We know also the Old Testament mentions false prophets. These were uh, liars who claimed to speak for God, but they really were intent on deceiving people or in serving their own interests, their, their wealth or their power or their prestige. Uh, we know that Ahab the king uh, who with whom uh, Elijah uh, dealt, uh, Ahab had almost 400 false prophets uh, in his uh, employ. Uh, as we read through the Bible, we see that the role of the Old Testament prophet uh, reached its consummation in the person of John the Baptist. Uh, he was predicted in Malachi 4, and we can read that uh, in just a few minutes. Uh, we also see in Jesus, uh, who was the prophet like Moses that was predicted in Deuteronomy as we find that in uh, the message of Acts chapter 3. So with that as a background, we consider Elijah uh, one of God's prophets. And Elijah was a very interesting uh, biblical character. And, and when I say biblical character, with the recognition that he was fully human and that uh, he lived life as we do, dealing with the ups and downs of life. But his life was very colorful. Uh, God used him during a very important time in Israel's history. Uh, God used him to oppose a wicked king and to work to bring revival, uh, spiritual revival, uh, to the people of Israel. Uh, now, like a lot of other uh, 
uh, characters in the Bible, at least those who were attempting to be faithful to God, uh, Elijah's life was uh, it was had a lot of challenges. His his life was often filled with turmoil, uh, and and he as an individual, because he was human, uh, dealt with the turmoil and the challenges of life. Sometimes dealt with it very well, uh, and sometimes uh, not so well. There were times he was very divisive or decisive and and very valiant, standing up. For God against whatever forces were opposing God's purpose, but there were also times he was very fearful and uncertain. Uh, he demonstrated uh, victory, but also defeat. Uh, usually the defeat we find uh, is followed by recovery of his uh, mission and of his desire uh, to be faithful to God. Uh, Elijah recognized the power of God at work in his life, and he knew how to call on that power of God boldly. Uh, but we also see him at time in what could only be described as the pits of depression. Uh, he, his work was devoted to the work of restoring uh, true worship, the true worship of Israel's God. His life was devoted to restoring true worship in Israel. And ultimately, uh, he urged the people of Israel to turn from their sin and to return to the true God and God's message. And certainly that is a message that is still valid today. So Elijah's work uh, is for us not just a reading of dusty history. Uh, it is a work. It is a living word uh, that speaks truth into our lives um, very uh, clearly today, uh, his his uh, preaching that God's people who faithfully serve God with their whole hearts, that's just as relevant now as it was uh, during his lifetime. As I've already mentioned, one of the characteristics of prophets is that the, the prophets didn't seek to be prophets. Elijah didn't seek to be one of God's messengers. God chose him directly for this task. Uh, and when he was called, Elijah didn't hesitate to take on this mission, even though from the very beginning, it appeared his life would be on a collision course uh, with King Ahab, uh, a wicked king who would threaten his life. Uh, but being called, Elijah set out immediately for the capital city of Samaria, uh, there to deliver an announcement to King Ahab. Because of God's desire to protect Elijah, who was being faithful to God, but also who was being very useful to God, uh, after Elijah delivered that message, God sent him into hiding uh, as uh, a God-inspired drought dried up streams and uh, withered up the crops uh, of, the, of the nation. Read about that in 1 Kings 17 and 18. Uh, we find also Elijah chosen to confront the followers of the false god Baal. Uh, he was chosen simply because he had a relationship with God. Uh, and in addition to confronting the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel, uh, Elijah also performed many other miracles, including uh, calling on God who provided an endless supply of flour for a widow uh, with whom uh, Elijah uh, stayed during significant parts of his ministry, and he also prayed and raised up her son who had died. So we see in Elijah uh, an ordinary person and understand that God uses, even as he used, God still uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. Part of the reason for Elijah's success, if, if you will, using that phrasing, uh, Elijah knew and learned the value of prayer, uh, and he used prayer uh, very uh, effectively. Uh, he was a powerful prayer. He prayed uh, to God vehemently. His prayers were bold. Uh, there were no small requests. He called on God to do the miraculous. Uh, or he talked about the drought. He prayed for a drought in the land. He prayed to raise the widow's son from the dead. He called down fire from heaven uh, to consume the offering on Mount Carmel. Uh, here's how uh, 1 Kings 18 records uh, the response of God to 
Elijah's prayer when he called down, Elijah called down fire at the usual time. This is 1 Kings 18, at the usual time for offering the evening sacrifice. Elijah the prophet walked up to the altar and prayed, O Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, prove today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant. Prove that I have done all that is all that is at your command immediately. The fire of the Lord flashed down from heaven and burned up the young bull, the wood, the stones, and the dust. It even licked up all the water in the trench. Water had been used to uh, baptize the offering and the altar. So we see through Elijah's life that, that prayer is truly powerful. His, his life reminds us that if if we trust in God and and in in many ways, but in 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 our praying, uh, demonstrate that trust in God, that will make a significant impact not only in our life, but in the lives of those that we are seeking uh, to reach uh, uh, in 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 God's purpose. But now, uh, as high and as uh, significant as these aspects of uh, Elijah's life are, we also have to note in looking at Elijah uh, that he was not always on the mountaintop spiritually. It, it appears, uh, that, well, it not just appears, he, he suffered from what we would classify as depression. He got depressed when he was rebuked while he was anticipating a moment of triumph. Uh, his, uh, his hopes, which were high and mighty, were crushed, and, and, in, and at that time he, he became heart sick. Uh, up till that point, he had been this epitome of spiritual courage, but then he collapsed. He ran away. He ran away when Israel seemed to need most his leadership. He may have missed an opportunity for national repentance, and and he was so despondent that he uh, appears to become suicidal. He suffered from what has been described as spiritual depression, which is a specific kind of depression related uh, to commitment to God. Uh, so Elijah's depression, along with the uh, despondency, the, the downward emotion that uh, many other biblical characters record, uh, as well as contemporary uh, godly leaders uh, face, uh, that alerts all of us to the fact that being committed to God doesn't exempt us uh, from getting down, uh, even getting into uh, depression. Uh, not only was there emotional uh, uh, difficulties to overcome, there, there was also a point where Elijah's life was threatened. When the false prophets of Baal were, were killed at Elijah's uh, instruction, uh, his life was threatened by Jezebel, the, the wife, the idolatrous wife of King Ahab. Uh, she was Israel's queen, and as such, she brought the worship of her false god Baal uh, into Israel. She influenced King Ahab to worship Baal, and she and to set up idols in Israel. Read about that in First Kings sixteen and chapter twenty one. Uh, so reminding us that uh, her response and her threat uh, toward Elijah reminds us that God's prophets, who bring messages of warning, are often hated. And they're accused often of being the cause of the suffering uh, that they have uh, predicted uh, in proclaiming God's message. Uh, so Jezebel and the, the false prophets of Baal that had not been killed uh, hated Elijah, and they did everything in their power to catch up to him, to kill him. And so we find that under that threat of his life, uh, in that moment of human weakness, he became deeply, deeply discouraged. And this is not to uh, criticize or condemn him. It's just to let us see that uh, when we face those discouraging times in our lives, that uh, that does not mean that we have uh, lost all, that, that, we, we, that there is no hope, there is no hope for future, that uh, we can never be useful again, but that these discouraging times are times to work through and to continue to seek God and to be open to God's response to us. Um, even though Elijah was deeply discouraged, very soon God reassured him 
and, and sent him back uh, to face King Ahab. Uh, and in going back, he was sent to deliver the message that Ahab and Jezebel would both die humiliating deaths because of all the wicked deeds they had done and for which they refused to repent. And Kings, First Kings uh, lets us see that exactly what Elijah had uh, proclaimed very soon happened. Uh, as I've already mentioned, we can learn more about the message of Elijah studying the mission of John the Baptist in the New Testament. Uh, God's One of God's messenger angels brought a message from God that a prophet was coming to announce that Jesus was the Christ, the long-awaited Messiah, and that John the Baptist was the prophet. And Jesus declared that John was an Elijah-like figure uh, in addition to the one who would come later, that's Matthew 11 and 17. Then an angel declared of John's mission. This is from Luke chapter 1. And he, John, will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will also go before him, that is, before Jesus, in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. That's Luke 1, 16 and 17. So ultimately, John the Baptist's ministry was marked by the spirit and power of Elijah. And this fulfilled the prophecy from Malachi uh, chapter 4, to which uh, I gave reference earlier. Let me read uh, Malachi 4, 5 and 6. Look, and this is the word of God. Look, I'm going to send to you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and awesome day of God. And he will bring back the hearts of the fathers to the sons and the hearts of the sons to their fathers, so that I will not come and strike the land with a ban. Not only do we find uh, references to Elijah in the Gospels, but uh, James uh, uses Elijah as an example of prayer. Uh, recorded in James chapter 5, James says that Elijah was a human being, even as we are. Yet Elijah prayed that it wouldn't rain, and it didn't rain. Then he prayed that it would rain, and it did rain. Uh, at least one lesson from this is that we can see through that the power of prayer is in God. It is not within our uh, human nature. Uh, our prayers, in that sense, uh, are not powerful. Our prayers connect us with the power of God. Uh, and in that connection, we see uh, our, our prayers able uh, to call forth the power of God. Uh, and so our, our prayers, which are prayed in faith, our prayers, which are prayed with boldness, uh, can uh, see great results. But always it is God's power uh, that is unleashed uh, or it is God's power uh, that we, we connect with that power and we're able to find ourselves being moved by that power uh, to do great things. Uh, now, like other biblical characters, I think sometimes we look at the prophets and, and we think that they were uh, superior to us morally or spiritually. Uh, certainly, if you read Elijah's life and ministry, you may think of him this way. But uh, the truth is, uh, Elijah probably was not uh, morally or, or spiritually superior to us. Uh, he needed correction. He needed encouragement. Uh, he needed the knowledge that other uh, people faithful to God uh, were standing like he was against the false god Baal, and God uh, made it very clear to him that he was not in this by himself, even though uh, he cried that he thought he was. So in a real sense, though, and this is not to take anything away from him, but he was not exceptionally spiritual or superior. He was completely human. Yet what made Elijah extraordinary was his complete commitment to the will of God. 
Elijah gave all his energy and all of his heart so that people would know the one true God. God truly used this ordinary person uh, to do extraordinary things. And God still does that. We are ordinary men and women committed through Jesus Christ to the purpose of God, not only in our personal lives, but in the world around us. And as such, if we are willing to follow through on that commitment, God will use us, maybe not to do uh, dramatic things that other people will notice or write down, but to do bold things that will impact the lives of people within our circle of influence. So follow Elijah's example, certainly of being immediate to respond to God and being bold to pray to God and to pray with boldness and expecting results. Uh, try not to follow his example into despondency or depression. But even if you find yourself suffering a setback after things may not work as you thought they would, uh, listen for and look for and wait for God to respond to you for God will and will show you a way out of that. It may involve getting other people's assistance, but God can show you the way out of the um the darkness uh, that may follow uh, a difficult time, or it may even follow a, a high and holy moment, but because our resources are depleted in that moment, uh, we find that we need to uh, come aside or come away uh, and, and have a little downtime and, and be renewed uh, by the Spirit of God. Look forward to Considering more from 2 Kings chapter 2, as we look at uh, Elijah's transitioning from this life to the next, uh, and as we use his last hours uh, to teach us uh, how we can be sure to live uh, un until uh, we leave this, this world. Uh, today, I, I don't have uh, the updated uh, prayer list to share with you. It will be on our uh, website, and of course, it will be available to you Sunday morning, uh, but um, check back on our website uh, in tomorrow or on, on Wednesday and Thursday uh, and find the most recent updates uh, to our prayer list. Thank you again for joining uh, with me today. Uh, I look forward to being with you uh, this, this coming Sunday.